Hey, good morning. It's Tuesday. We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. And Jim, the Dow closing in on 22,000. President Trump weighing in on Twitter. Yes, says we don't pay enough attention to it. I hope in the, on your roundtable, that's, yes. that's 11, that you go around and say, are people not paying enough attention to it? And why? Because I know the president thinks that the mainstream media, I guess of which we're part of, <laughs> uh, did not, uh, has not addressed it well enough. Since I talk about it every day, I find, well, maybe I'm not mainstream, maybe I'm somewhere else. <laughs> but uh, look, I happen to think that uh, we're a little extended. I, I said that yesterday in my uh, action alerts bulletins, but why I say it a little extended, because we tend to get money to come in in August mm. at the beginning, uh, but near the end of the month has often been very hard. Mm. So we just want a little cash, need the cash. Mm. And Jim, in terms of what's driving the Dow, you actually say Boeing is the new fang. Well, but yeah, <laughs> uh, offhandedly, but Boeing, the analysts were very against Boeing. The analysts, uh, there were very few analysts who believed in Boeing, believed in the cash flow, believed in the 737, believed in the Dreamliner, uh, and they were proven wrong. And uh, the order book there is a 10-year order book, and I really think that people have to recognize that Boeing is the industrial engine of our country. Uh, just, look, I happen to like Caterpillar very much, but Boeing is, when you think about industrial might, that's what we are in this country, mm -hmm. aerospace. GE, United Technologies, could read through too, but GE's got other problems. Mm -hmm. United Technologies doesn't. Right. Honeywell, very good too. Yes, let's talk about some earnings. We had Pfizer reporting. Yeah, you know, Pfizer's a bond. Uh, it, it's just a bond. I, I, I don't see any needle movers. You, every time I see the Pfizer quarter, I recognize why uh, they needed to do the Allergan deal, which we own for Action Alerts. I do think Pfizer was smart. It spun off Animal Health. That's hurt Lilly. We love Lilly. Mm. But then again, they didn't get a very good price. I, I, I'm i confused by Pfizer and why they haven't done uh, more breakthrough work. I really am. Generics were a rough spot for Pfizer, too. Yeah, and I, I just don't get it. I don't get why Pfizer is... Uh, it, it has su it had such abilities to be able to really shake things up and do great things. They have not distinguished themselves. Why do we like Lilly? Uh, Lilly's got a, a, an oncology pipeline. Uh, Lilly's got a bunch of drugs that I think would be very big, and they were turned down on a very important rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis drug that is selling like mad in Japan and also Europe. So I think the FDA should relook their negative about RA uh, because Americans deserve that drug. Jim, let's move on to retail. We know you've been concerned for quite some time. Under Armour reporting earnings and job cuts. Yeah, look, Under Armour, this is what you, this is what has to happen to get a bottom. I mean, you don't just you don't just create a bottom by uh, starting uh, to uh, turn up. You you have to crater things. Not unlike Nike two quarters ago, which really cratered things. So I am uh, I'm not a fan of Under Armour as much. I really like Nike. Uh, I think Nike's back, and it's important. It's interesting. I Nike. PVH, Columbia Sportswear, and uh, VF, all companies I like, okay, I buy, recommend their stocks, have all been flying here, and that's because in many ways the suppliers have done quite well. So uh, keep in mind that the suppliers are doing well. Now the brick and mortar places have been moving quietly up. I have a piece of real money about that that yes. people should read about Amazon and brick and mortar. But for Under Armour, I mean, is Steph Curry, is that enough to move the needle? I guess not. No, Under Armour still, look, they've spent a lot of money getting endorsements. They've spent a lot, although Steph would say, hey, listen, I like this brand, whatever. Um, look, it takes some time. Uh, they, they didn't understand that Adidas was going to come in and, and the effective impact of Adidas, nor did Nike, by the way. Uh, they didn't understand the shift in what kind of clothes people wanted. Uh, you know, a little bit less performance, a little more style. Uh, and they were too bullish on themselves. Mm. And this was a humbling statement that they put out. Mm. I happen to like Kevin Plank very much, but uh, humility had not been a strong suit for a while. It sure is today. All right, now the sneaker business not looking so great at Foot Locker, which had its price target lowered at Credit Suisse. Yeah, you know, Foot Locker's a really, really good company. So when I looked at that, I said, is, kind of you know, is that going to be a bottom in Foot Locker? But Foot Locker's in the mall. I keep thinking about that Starbucks Tivana mm. and how the mall just even, you know, they were thinking about having stores that would still stay open. Uh, they didn't. The mall's a graveyard. But you know what? It's a graveyard that still makes a lot of money if you look at Simon Properties numbers, yes. which were extraordinarily good. It's mall to mall. You have to understand that there's a lot of malls uh, and shopping centers where people, companies are desperate to get in. 
Uh, but those are companies that tend to have something that can't be Amazon. If you take a look at the most recent shopping centers that Federal Realty has, almost only about 8% out of 100% are what we would regard as being Amazonable stores and enterprises. All right, shifting gears now, Snap won't be allowed into the S&P 500, but that seems to be the least of their problems. Well, you know, Snap is, uh, there are people who really think, uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin, a good friend of mine, was saying, well, you really want that pool of capital to come into your name. I come back and say, I have been with many execs who wish they were not their companies were not part of the S&P mm. because then their stocks are dragged down, even if they're doing great things, by sell programs. So uh, overrated is an issue. Do you think we're seeing a backlash against companies with multi-class shares? Well, this is backlash, yeah. yeah. Um, let's also talk about your Mad Dash segment. You talked about Micron Technology. Yeah, look, Micron it, it reported a couple quarters that were really blowout. The stock didn't go up. That is typically the beginning of what is a rollover because it's a boom bust, bust stock. I've been waiting for some analysts to break ranks and say sell Micron. I mean, Seagate uh, had a terrible quarter that's distrust. Micron is DRAMs and Flash. Western Digital had a, uh, did not raise guidance. That was uh, disk drives. They're disk drives and they're Flash. Uh, Glam Research has said, don't worry, there's not too many capitals, uh, semiconductor, cap semiconductor capital equipment orders that would make you feel that there's, a, that there's about to be an inventory glut. Um, the stock is saying otherwise. The stock is saying there is a glut and the DRAM prices went up too much. It's really hard to figure out. But that stock's got to go back over 31 hmm. or else I think people, someone's going to break ranks and say, this part of the cycle is now over. It's no longer equilibrium. There's too many DRAMs in the system. If that happens, then Micron breaks to 20 very quickly. All right, staying with this space, NXP Semiconductors and Action Alerts holding their report tomorrow. Yeah, now NXPI is a takeover stock. Uh, they're being bought by Qualcomm. Qualcomm, by the way, very interesting option trade, I would say, the 45s and maybe the 55s. Uh, out two months if they can beat Apple. I don't know if they can. Uh, but Qualcomm desperately needs NXPI. But NXPI is at over 110. The deal's not about to close. Normally the time value of money would indicate that that stock should be down two bucks from where it is. Huh. That to me is a sign that people are not going to tender to the takeover uh, because, and we're not recommending people tender at Action Alerts. Why? Because if you look at where Skyworks is and you look at where Avago is, you look at where, it, which is now Broadcom, you look at where NVIDIA is, you look at where Corvo is, you can make a very strong case, very strong case that NXPI should be up another $10 hmm. and it's not worth tendering to that 110 uh, offer that Qualcomm's giving you. Qualcomm needs NXPI, that's a lot of auto, near field communications, internet of things. They need the diversification away from, even though they've got some, away from cell phones. We'll look for your action alerts bulletins. Another stock we're watching, Square, what are you expecting from Sarah Fryer? I like Square. Uh, it, the issue with Square is it's run so, so much. Uh, we, at Bar San Miguel, we like their caviar product. We've not adopted their uh, registered product because the registered product is really designed for companies that need cash uh, because Square can look at your receipts and advance that money. Uh, we decided, we did an analysis uh, and just felt that it wasn't worth our while. But if you're a small business that has uh, cash flow, uh, you're always trying to worry about your cash flow, uh, then I think that they make a really good product. The stock was undervalued when it came public. A lot of people didn't like what's so-called Dorsey taint because uh, mm -hmm. he was running both companies. But Square is a good handy product for small and medium-sized businesses that are cash constrained. All right, and then finally, the ultimate esports stock, Take Two Interactive. Well, Take Two, uh, they are not the ultimate esports stock. That's Activision Blizzard. They want to be an esports stock by using uh, NBA 2K. Uh, we'll find out about that, but uh, esports is over. Uh, the, is Overwatch and of course League of Legends. I think Take Two would like to be more of an esports story. It's going to be Red Dead Redemption. How are we doing in terms of the time of that? Uh, uh, Mafia, the Mafia series, which I like very much, but it's not a consequential quarter. Now, because the company is so diversified, and Grand Theft Auto has all these iterations, a non-consequential quarter has still been good for Take Two. Uh, so I think that I'm not uh, that worried about the quarter, but it's not why you own the stock. And we have been taking a very hard look at Activism Blizzard for ActionAlertsPlus.com because we think it is cheap, but we'd like it to go lower.
So that's where you are. Do not forget on this on your round table. I would yes. love to hear whether you whether the people on the table and I know I hope they don't default to saying, listen, I'm a gold guy. I'm a bond guy. So listen, to me. I'm a structured credit guy because that would be unfair. Um, does the pre is the president's brief right against the mainstream media that we don't talk about Dow 22,000 enough? I spend um, every night of my life talking about how the markets good and doing well, even last night addressing why I'm still constructive up here. I think that perhaps the mainstream media, either we're not mainstream media, hear what we do with the street or CNBC, but the president should tune into uh, Mad Money, which he's been on, and recognize that every night when we do these highs, we talk very positively about wealth creation and what it means. Well, you do some fantastic work, so we're grateful thank for that. Thank you very much. Jim Cramer, thank you so thank much. Thank you. And yes, please check out our roundtable coming up at 11 a.m. Eastern. And for more of the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.